Welcome to the CBT Nuggets CCENT video series, or what some people would call ICND1. My name is Jeremy Chera, and I'll be talking with you throughout this entire series. And I realize that this may be a first for many of you on two accounts. First off, it could be your first time with CBT Nuggets. Since this is the beginning of a Cisco certification track, you may have never seen another CBT Nuggets before. Second, it may be a first into the Cisco certification track, so in this introductory video I want to talk about both. I want to first off talk about how we train at CBT Nuggets and set your expectations for the whole series. Second, I want to talk about what I believe to be the most valuable certification you could ever get. It's Cisco certification. Talk about why I believe that and what I believe to be the best path for you to go through Cisco certification. Talk about what employers are looking for, why they're looking for it, and so on. I'll then talk about getting the most from the series because I want you to be prepared as you go through here to get the most from it. Um, so I'll give you some tips on just watching the series in general and then I know many of you are taking the certification exam so I want to give you some tips on preparing for the exam. Now because of that I would recommend that you begin the series with this video just like you're doing now and end the series with this video. Not the whole thing, maybe just the tips on preparing to take the exam because that will refresh your mind on what is the best way to study for the certification test. Well let me start off by talking about how we do what we do here at CBT Nuggets. And I realize I'm coming against a thousand stereotypes that people have anytime they hear the words online training or e-learning. Most people, when they hear that, immediately get images of the, in their mind of, uh, well, boring. <laughs> you know, it's just somebody reading something to them that they could read from the screen themselves, if, uh, probably even faster. As a matter of fact, there's an extremely large company that shall remain nameless who is large enough to produce online training for their own employees and they did a study of how long the session would be maintained meaning how long somebody would keep the window open uh, for the online training titles you know what the average was two minutes two minutes and people would shut the window and eh, that's, uh, I'm, I'm done with that that's not <laughs> what CBT Nuggets is about. CBT Nuggets is just like a classroom environment in that we have network diagrams that you'll be looking at and working through, a whiteboard, key facts, live demonstrations. It's just like you're there in a classroom, you just don't see me waving my hands around, jumping all around, up and down in front of the classroom. And because of that, I will offer you my no falling asleep guarantee, meaning it's my goal, it's my job to keep this interesting enough, which I believe with Cisco is very easy to do because it's a very interesting topic, educational and kind of entertaining all at the same time. Likewise, we gear everything around short palatable sessions. Uh, that's why we have the name CBT Nuggets is the series consists of short little 30 minutes, that's our, our target mark, 30 minute sessions that you can Come to, watch one or two of them, get the information you need, take a break, you know, watch them on the road, watch them on a laptop, anywhere you want. Just It's like watching a sitcom, I guess you could say. Just a 30-minute, uh, you're in, you're out. Because of that, these 30-minute sessions have no fluff. I cut out all marketing junk and, you know, the stuff that you typically have to listen through that just ha is, isn't that valuable to you. Um, it has no script, meaning... I don't read anything and for me that's much better because I can't imagine trying to read something to you and somehow make it fun at the same time. Now I have to warn you as we go through there is no scripts. There may be times when I'm in a live demonstration showing you something and all of a sudden it blows up and I go right wasn't supposed to do that and then we'll work through it together to try and figure out what the problem is that's kind of part of the fun and kind of part of the real world as you're working with Cisco devices likewise I may stutter from time to time I may lose my train of thought I may go off on some tangent that had <laughs> what am I doing right now going off on some tangent that has nothing to do with anything that we're talking about but I guarantee you I'll bring it back in and it will make sense in the end so CBT Nuggets is different in that sense, that it is kind of a fun, entertainable, educationable way to go through this information. 
With that, let me move into the Cisco certification track and the, and the certification program. I started this video by saying Cisco certification is the most valuable certification you could ever get. And here's why. I've gone through many vendors certification programs like Novell and Microsoft. I have a CNE in Netware 4 and 5. I have an MCSE in Windows NT and Windows 2000. And when I got those certifications, they were, you know, kind of monumental and I got a cool plaque in the mail, or actually it was a certificate, and uh, some logos to use on my business card, but that was about it. You know, it's all, well, it's all the vendors could really do. They just said, okay, well, you're now certified, uh, go on your way, and, and may the force be with you. With Cisco, on the other hand, when you get Cisco certifications, employers are looking for you. The reason is because Cisco supports their certified people, unlike any other company, by giving employers discounts on Cisco equipment for hiring you. Meaning, they have these different partner roles that, uh, that, in, that agencies and, and organizations can achieve with Cisco. And the higher your partner relationship is, the more discount you get on Cisco equipment and the more support you get and things like that. And the only way to become a partner is... You guessed it, to, to hire certified individuals for your company. So employers are looking for you, and the higher your certification, of course, the higher the partner level is to achieve and the higher the discount. So it's good news to get Cisco certified, you, and, and don't worry. You still get the, the, the certificate. You still get the logos. Those aren't gone. You just now get the benefit that employers need you which is very valuable. Because of that, Cisco certification is one of the most difficult to achieve in the industry as well. Their exams are extremely real world, meaning it's not just one of those things where you can study a book and read the bullets and go, oh, okay, you know, uh, Cat5 cable goes 100 meters and there's the fact, answer that next on the exam. It's not those kinds of questions. The questions, sure, they have multiple choice, but it's more of scenario multiple choice, and I'll talk about that as we talk about the exam itself. Uh, they have simulations. They have testlets, which are scenarios that tie into simulations. A lot of stuff goes in there. The CCNA program in 2007 was also revised to become essentially more difficult. That's where the CCENT certification was introduced. Uh, they said, you know, if, if people are going to get a CCNA, they really need to know what they're doing. They really need to know a lot about a lot. So CCENT is how to set up a Cisco network for a small business. And I'll talk about that specifically on the next slide. CCNA is focusing now more on medium to large businesses. And when you move into the CCNP, again, talk about that on the next slide, uh, you, you're moving more into the enterprise. Let's look at the Cisco certification track as a whole. First off, you can see the CCENT and CCNA are the foundations of the entire program. So you have to begin here to really move into the CCVP, CCNT, all, the, all of the deeper certifications that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, there's multiple ways you can go about getting the CCENT and CCNA. The most common is going the two-test route, meaning take the ICND-1 exam, which matches up to the CCENT, and you get your first uh, level certification, and then passing ICND-2 as the, the second exam will give you your CCNA. Now, just passing ICND2 without passing one will not grant you your CCNA. You actually will have nothing <laughs> if you pass ICND2. It's, it, well, you'll have the second exam out of the way. You can take them in any order. Now, first question is, how long can I wait after taking ICND1 before I take ICND2 without any expiration or anything like that? The answer is three years. Now, most people won't wait that amount of time, but that's an option. You can take ICND-1 and then three years later, latest, pass ICND-2 and have your CCNA. And at that point, you will be a CCENT and CCNA with a new expiration of three years. Passing any lower or I should say higher level exam will automatically renew all of your lower level certifications for three or more years. So that should give you a tip for the future. If you get your CCNT 
or CCNA, and then you pass one of the potentially four CCNP exams that will automatically renew your CCNA and CCENT for three more years. So Cisco makes it beneficial to you to move on in your certification track rather than just retaking the same old exams every three years. They also have the one test wonder path. And I'm hesitant to even throw this one out there, but there is a single CCNA exam that you can pass, and it will automatically grant you your CCNA and your CCENT at the same time. Now, it's very tempting to go after that exam because people, you know, are it's it's easier to take one exam right and and you only have to pay for one exam and only sit through one exam that's true however keep in mind that CCNA is designed for people that have an expiring certification meaning they're an expiring CCNA and they just want to retake it again so they've got the experience they've got the certification already under their belt and they just want to renew it for three more years that's what this one is designed for however Cisco says by the way if you can also pass that and you don't have anything you'll get your CCNA as well so it is a very difficult exam to say the least I will say the biggest thing you're fighting on CCNA that you don't have to fight as much on ICND 1 and ICND 2 is time meaning you're rushed against the clock to get through that exam whereas with ICD-1 and ICD-2 sure you have a time limit but it's nowhere near as intense as taking the CCNA so once you have your CCNA under your belt you can move into any one of the three other major certification programs there are others out there it's just these are the ones most people go after statistically most people will go after their CCNP which is a focus in depth on routing and switching now once you get your CCNP it is four more exams to achieve that so it's not it's it's quite an accomplishment to get that but you are considered a extremely proficient network engineer in the routing and switching arena some people will go after the CCSP first which is a security professional it's five exams to go after that or some people will go after the CCVP first which is also five exams in my opinion it is more valuable to go after the CCNP first and then transfer over into one of your specialties if you'd like to the reason for that is the VP and the SP, while they, they do stand on their own, they really assume you know a lot about the CCNP that really, well, it's not in the CCNA, it's in the CCNP, and they assume you know that stuff moving into there. It's, I'm not saying you can't move from the CCNA into the CCNP or the VP. I'm just saying you'll be more well-rounded if you go after the CCNP first because you'll have a good foundation of routing and switching. I have all three of these, the VP, the NP, and the SP. And just from my experience, I, I, through many of the, the topics in VP and SP, I got in my mind, I'm like, wow, if I didn't know what I knew about routing and switching I don't think I would fully understand this concept so take that for what it's worth now 2% of anyone who has ever taken a Cisco certification exam will go on to attempt the CCIE it is two exams one is a written qualification exam which is three hundred dollars the other is the practical lab exam which is twelve hundred and fifty dollars plus travel expenses because you have to travel to one of Cisco's CCIE locations and sit through a grueling eight-hour lab exam where you build a full-blown network infrastructure the CCIE that you focus on you can see routing and switching and voice and security is the type of equipment that you'll be tested on expected to implement CCIE has long been considered the I guess you could call it the PhD of Cisco certifications it's like getting your doctorate um, because it is very difficult not many pass people pass the first time so you have to go back multiple times but all of these are explained fully on the Cisco certification website that is my best resource if you're looking for the facts of what is the time limit for the exam what is going to be tested on the exams but do expect those to be very vague as a matter of fact I'll take you to that website in just a moment and show you that it's it's what exam numbers are, are uh, assigned to the exam all of the exam info is right there we are here to focus in on the CCENT certification, which I would say, if I had one word to describe it, 
it would be foundation. It is the foundation of everything networking. It's the first of, of many steps. <laughs>